COVID-19 pandemic has catalyzed digital transformation for businesses, pushed citizens to use technology in all walks of life, and even has global political leaders interacting with each other using virtual collaboration. While this all-pervasive use of technology has indeed kept us afloat through the pandemic, it has also opened up doors to increased risks of cybersecurity threats, data thefts, data breaches, et cetera. And that's what we are here to talk about. Hello and welcome to Forbes India Presents, the future of cybersecurity powered by Trend Micro. I'm Ridhu Ghandari. And I'm joined by a set of eminent industry stalwarts here today to discuss the future of cybersecurity. Let me welcome them. I have with me Ravinder Pal Singh, Chief Information and Innovation Officer at Vistara. Thanks very much for joining us here today. Cyber crimes have been surging through the pandemic. In fact, India's National Cybersecurity Coordinator recently mentioned that since the onset of COVID-19, there has been at least a 50% surge in global cyber crimes. Ravi, large scale organizations have really worked over time to sort of enable remote working. At the same time, cyber criminals have also been working over time to stay ahead and uh, take advantage of the pandemic. So what are companies really doing to secure remote working for employees and to really update and improve their security measures as far as uh, you know crisis response efforts are concerned uh, particularly never in the history of of cyber uh, you know hacking per se there has been a clear division there has been a clear division hence there are two different set of attacks one one which is coming in commodity zone which you have mentioned which is end user tech mostly you know private info uh, carrying on and and then hackers try to indirectly uh, create a corporate threat. But the other one, which is fierce and ferocious, is the one which is in the industrial and specialized domain, uh, mostly nuclear plants, defense aircrafts, oil rigs. They are far more complex. The first one, uh, which is in commodity zone, can be handled you know, through proper monitoring, BAPT, and all those kind of stuff. If you have a strong knock and sock, then you can do that. The second one is a challenge where, and especially if you have equipments which have been, you know, manufactured outside of India, those are the ones which are a real challenge and most large companies are grappling with that challenge. You know, investments and investing in security. Ravi, we've also been seeing the rise of digital forensics in recent years while, uh, you know, these were earlier used by authorities to look for evidence against lawbreakers. We're also seeing increased usage of digital forensics by IT security and legal teams of businesses. Is this an effective route for fraud detection? Or what do you think? And what are some of the challenges that are associated uh, with digital forensics in particular? Digital forensics was never seriously a part of a corporate person or a corporate structure. Now, especially, you know, with the first part, which is, you know, work from home and, you know, bring your own device kind of thing. Somehow corporates have been pulled into understanding of digital forensics. Fundamentally, majorly globally, there are three kinds of forensics which are accepted. Network forensics, I don't think corporates are equipped to do that in terms of intrusions or the jurisdiction of that intrusion. So they depend upon someone who is outside. For the structured data, well, you know, corporates are equipped because most of them understand their tech stack and all this stuff. Unstructured data, machine learning part of thing, it's something which is, again, it can be a boon, but it can complicate things, especially when, you know, crypto and other things are involved. And the last one is something where uh, most uh, organizations are putting a lot of attention. It's the simplest one, which is your mobile-based or, or mobile device-based forensics, where, you know, if you have a case, then you have to understand the recovery of your digital evidences and all this stuff. So the third area is the simplest one where everyone is thinking about but the most dangerous one is the network forensics one, mostly related to intrusion and finding out the jurisdiction of that particular intrusion, where still a lot of work has to be done and a lot of help outfits will require now and in future. Right, right. You know, talking of silos, Ravi, a lot of data in companies also rests in silos, departmental silos, functional silos, uh, you know, technical silos, a lot of which uh, lack interoperability as far as technologies are concerned. So in this scenario, how should an organization draw out a comprehensive uh, cybersecurity plan for the future? There's no straight answer uh, to that. Certain things which any corporate can do right. One is ensure that external threats are reduced a bare minimum because there is a commonality to that. I'm, I'm talking about a generic sense uh, in terms of corporate systems. I'm not talking about specialized one, which I will just spend a little bit time later on. So external threats, uh, I think that's the weakest part. Both they and Nilesh hinted on that. Just because boards or others, they don't understand the complexity of the perimeter. They are not willing to give that particular budget. But if you stop that particular threat, then at least the data loss and the financials of data loss is reduced tremendously. 
Others are in terms of what kind of checks and balances which you have to do at a code level if you're writing your own code, which I don't know how, how to do that. You should have set of standards, but that's a lame reply. Everyone says that you should have a checklist and all this stuff. That comes with uh, discipline and, and the quality of developers. But the other stuff which you can have, which the platforms which you buy or out-of-shelf products which you buy, uh, keep them updated, keep them patched, make sure your VAPT is an actionable report, take it seriously, okay? Uh, those are the simple uh, common sense practical things which any organization can do uh, without even spending um, uh, you know much budgets on them but external one i think almost every especially in india almost everyone has to do more in terms of spend and ensuring that their perimeter is uh, secure right there is also a rise in hyper connectivity of people of processes data objects all of that getting linked to the internet more and more critical data is being stored uh, that related to our health, our finances, et cetera, on cloud. So how do organizations then ensure end-to-end -end security, particularly as cloud, uh, as a technology becomes more and more mainstream? Bridu, there are four mistakes which companies have done and most of them still continue to do. Irrespective of all the practices uh, they must have uh, built and all the guidelines and specifications. And there are four mistakes which continue to happen that basically puts that concept and challenges that concept. Number one, network segmentation of cloud. And this is a little bit technical. Network segmentation of cloud is a very different ballgame altogether. Most CIOs and CTOs still try to segment network on cloud like they will do it for a normal data center based kind of thing. That is one place where most of them go wrong. Second thing is cloud-based access controls, okay? Are, has to be crystal clear. You cannot get away like everyone. It's a semi-controlled shared environment. Third one is that, which, which you have pointed out, uh, most critical applications, if they have been put onto the cloud, they are using compute at a rapid, rapid rate. Hence, they must be in a multi-tenant mode. That's the assumption I'm making. And if you are doing that, and if they are critical applications with the financials uh, related to it, then liability becomes very critical. And if those uh, cloud are multi-cloud environment, be very, very clear about liabilities. Include your legal team more than operational team. Architecture literally dictates the liability and the legality of that particular cloud. These four things, if you set up right in a cloud environment, I don't think any organization will fail uh, from the infos, at least from the infosec perspective, if it is a cloud computing architecture. We have seen that technology is pretty much taking over our lives, uh, whether it's work, play, leisure, anything. Technology is really keeping us afloat at this point in time, for sure. So as technology leader, what is the big tectonic shift that you are foreseeing as far as cybersecurity is concerned? And how are you gearing up for that? I think AI and especially machine learning will play a critical role both sides. It would be complex to, to hack, let's say, industrial equipment or a customized robot versus it will become a easier to decipher or to decrypt a commodity-based threat. I think next era, from a simplified to a medium complex algorithms based on machine learning will dictate both complexity and simplicity of cyber threats. Well, thank you very much for joining us here.